Rediscovering Self, Daily Steps to Self-Awakening. You know, when I work with people, oftentimes one of the greatest questions on their heart is, who am I? What am I here for? What is my mission on this earth? Have you ever found yourself asking that same question? And it's something that the world can't tell us. If we look to the people around us and we ask, who am I? They'll say, I don't know. Do you need me to help you? <laughs> I can help you grow. I can help you find what you need in the earth. But I cannot tell you who you are or what your purpose is on this planet. Last month, we spent the entire month working on learning how to be taught by God. Every week, we took another step in opening our hearts to really hear and embody that wisdom and that intuition that comes when we, when we can still our minds and hear God speaking and teaching us. And I hope that you all are using those skills. A very few heads are nodding. <laughs> well, I would hope that you remember them. But as beings, we need to be able to open our heart and turn to God and ask for the better way. Ask for that internal guidance. So God is always seeking to teach us within our hearts. But there's a law that's functioning in the outer world that I wanted to share with you that is also always seeking to teach us who we are. This is the law of identity. I'm going to read it to you from this beautiful little cheat sheet that you get when you study the metaphysics uh, class with uh, Cheryl. The law of identity. Every creature is unique with localized intelligence. All of our experiences seek to show us who we are. Every experience is helping you define your true nature. The law of identity. Not only are we being taught within our hearts from God, but the universe seeks to teach us through our experiences who we are. Breathe that in. Within all of us is a seed. And think with me for a minute. Within the plants, those little seeds that we put in the soil and they grow and become, within the little plant seed plant for a tomato, everything that that little tomato needs is in that little seed. All of its instructions and all of its um, how-to and what it needs to become is all there. That tomato does not need us to tell it to become a tomato. Do you know? That tomato goes into the ground, the little plant goes into the ground, it becomes a plant, and then it grows the fruit. The fruit of its existence is tomatoes. There's never doubt about what it should be. It doesn't sit when it's growing through the soil and go, perhaps I should become a cucumber. <laughs> maybe if I mix my DNA, maybe if I mix my strands, I could be this beautiful cucumber. The thought doesn't enter its mind. Yet we pride ourselves so on our ability to think freely, on our freedom, on our uniqueness. Aren't we fabulous? Aren't we so interesting? That's all we think about. How can I become a cucumber? I don't quite know who I am, but if I get in there and start mixing things up, I think I can control my destiny and become something other than the seed that's within me. Oh, you all go through a cucumber phase. <laughs> you do, at some time or another. So, I thought it was interesting that um, my son shared with me one of his many lessons from his college experience. <clears throat> Scientific fact. The DNA from one fruit fly to the next is more different than the DNA from one human being to the next. The DNA from one penguin to the next, and those penguins look exactly alike. I mean, really, you try to pick them out. They look exactly alike. The DNA from a penguin to the next has greater variety and is more different than the DNA from one human to the next. Huh. How about that? So would you say we all carry the same seed? We all have the same seed. 
And it's the seed of being a child of God. Child of God, a seed of spiritual expression on earth. That's why we can't find our answer when we're looking at the earth. The seed of God within each one of us. We are all more similar to one another than the creatures are similar to one another. Does that make you feel comfortable? Some say yes and some say no. <laughs> if the universe seeks to teach us in the inner, and the universe seeks to show us who we are in the outer. How do we begin our journey of focus to see what is already there? How do we find that seed of me? In the Aquarian chapter 23, I love the scripture because I think we need to get it. Uh, Jesus is speaking to one of the enlightened masters, and he's still a boy. He's under 20. And the enlightened master has told him a story of what's always been shared, the dogma of their belief. You know, the dogma of their belief. We say the same thing over and over again because it was told to us, not because we believe it. And he said to the teacher, enlightened Arabo, are you a master mind and do not know that man knows nothing by being told? Man may believe what others say, but he never knows. If a man would know, he must himself be what he knows. He must have the inner knowledge and the inner experience of what he believes to be true. Don't you think that's part of our journey on this planet? Being, learning to embody what we believe to be true. How easy is this? All right. We go into our meditation. How do we bring that inner awareness into the outer expression and stay awake to our own natures? We talk about this a lot. It's probably our theme at Inner Quest. Inner Quest, Outer Demonstration. Inner understanding, outer expression. How do we take that beautiful, beautiful loving of oneness into our unique expression of God in our life? When we go into meditation, we feel so great, and then we open our eyes, and we're going out in the world, and we get caught in the minutia of the details. And those details, when they come at us, they become alive. And they have a life of their own. And they start taking over our mind and thoughts. And they become bigger than you. Do you realize that? Mm -hmm. That piece of paper is bigger than you sometimes. And that, that even fabricated dilemma you're dealing with in your own mind becomes bigger than who you are as a spirit. Then you go back within and you do your meditation and you're at peace. Open your eyes and you go through the same process again. In that process, do you see how the seed thought of who you are is not being fed when the piece of paper is bigger than you? The seed thought of who you are is not being fed. And we forget that the universe is actually sending us messages with that piece of paper. The universe is sending us a message about who we are with that piece of paper. We're always being taught, always being taught. Things become more important than us and our step, what we typically do, is we want to just erase it and go back into the quiet where we know we're okay in spirit. But until we know we're okay in matter, we are not cracking the core of the seed. White Eagle says, and Jesus teacher and healer, it's beautiful, just a few little sentences. Don't hurry to get out of your physical body. Because it's in your physical body that you learn. You learn about the power of love, you learn about creation and harmony and peace. And this is the one place where we have the capacity to take that deep inner knowing and then look outward and do something with it and be creative. All right, so I wanted to give you some steps for conscious mind participation. Ready? Yes. We're in June, action month, male energy, Take going forward. Step number one, remember the inner. <laughs> Remember consciously that inner connection, that spiritual, spiritual home. And when you read the Aquarian or the New Testament, every time Jesus did anything big, he always preceded it by days of meditation. Before he selected the twelve disciples, he went into silent thought for three days. Before the meeting of the sages, they meditated for seven days. The sages gave the plan for the next 2,000 years, and then they meditated seven more days before Jesus gave them his plan, that he couldn't do what they wanted, but God had given him a plan. Every time something major occurs, 
there is a moment of time where he goes within to make sure what he is about to bring in the outer is in alignment with who he is in the inner. Never forget the inner. That's step one. Step two. Remember, we're talking about right now steps we can take to bring the awareness of self into greater realization in our world. Step two. Look at your attitude. You hear that a lot when you're a kid, don't you? And it's normally like, I don't like that attitude. Attitude is when you're getting called down for something. But they are, Spirit is asking us to look at our attitudes because attitude is a state of being, a habitual tendency. And it is the energy that we expand all the time. Our attitude is the soil for our seed. Not only the soil for our seed in our heart, but the soil for every seed that comes to us. And I want you to think with me for a minute. Think of everybody right now. I know every one of you is going, I've got a good attitude. I've got a really good attitude. Your attitude is actually created by a general thought. So I'll have a thought for you. I'm tired. Did anybody leave for work with that thought in their mind? Yeah. I'm, I'm tired. I'm just tired. Okay, that's a prevailing thought that's going through every cell in your body. Every cell in your body. This is creating a generally expended energy of. Oh. Now, how much is the seed thought being filled with that? How much can come to you if you're tired? People will avoid you like the plague. <laughs> if they need you to participate on some great, exciting venture, they will not ask you. <laughs> They'll go to someone else. This is called attitude. This is the soil that we put our seeds in. Here's another one that you don't think you have. <laughs> I am afraid I will make a mistake. But I'm going to go anyway. But I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake. What do you think that does to your attitude? I am afraid makes you small. I'm going to make a mistake. It takes away your power. It, it takes your power away because now you don't have the power to choose. It diminishes who you are. And who's going to ask you to help on some great project? They're going to avoid you. They're going to avoid you. They're going to say, oh, go sit in your little chair and do what you need to do. But more importantly, how is this feeding the seed of who you are and the seed of who you need to become? Y'all hearing me? Attitude creates the general atmosphere, the soil that you're planting your seeds in. All right. Take a moment and listen to these definitions. When we talk about someone's attitude, we might say, oh, they're easygoing. You said that about somebody? Oh, they're controlling. I know you've said that about a lot of people. Oh, they're focused. Oh, they're scattered. We know so many scattered people. How many do we say, oh, they're committed? When you think about your attitude right now, what word would you give to your attitude, your general attitude this past week? Think about it. Think about the general attitude this past week. Have you ever met anyone when you say they are connected? Ooh, they're connected. Well, that's my goal. I want my attitude to be a connected attitude. That no matter where I am or what I'm doing, I've got the link going. I'm talking with God about everything. This year we've been focusing on... Are y'all squirming yet? <laughs> Good. Are you seeing how you can improve? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. This year we've been fo focusing on an affirmation outrageous expectations of good because the planetary energies which I've discussed with you on numerous occasions are so crazy that unusual outrageous things are going to happen this fast and you will not be prepared for them that's what's happening to the world and if we know this these energies are going to be shifting fast in front of us if we Stand forth and call forth good, outrageous expectations of good. Has anybody been working with that this year? We're six months into it. We've already seen tremendous changes. We've already seen so many unusual things happen that we couldn't have fathomed. 
were we able to see the good in it? Some, we're trying, we're trying. But if we stand on just that affirmation alone, outrageous expectations of good, and we wake with that, what does that do to our attitude? Does it open us up for greater? And it, we immediately become receptive, don't we? Outrageous expectations, and we are expecting good. When we can get all of those feelings in the formula, what kind of soil will be created in our attitude to plant the seeds? We will be expanding completely. We'll be expanding and embracing all that the universe has for us. Our attitude is so important. Do I look like your mom yet? <laughs> Moms normally teach us this. All right, so outrageous expectation of good does keep us connected to the universe as well. We're able to receive, we're calling forth good, and we're connected. So that was step number two. Step number one, don't forget the inner. Step number two, watch your attitude. That's a simple thing you can do in the morning, isn't it? Simple little thing you can do. Oh, let me adjust myself. Let me adjust. And you do it through picking a new thought. There is hope at the end of the day. A new thought, any thought, I want to close this day knowing as I put my head on the pillow, good has occurred. It could be that simple a thought to shift your attitude. And that shifts the soil that you plant your seeds in. 